And Nathan, now you get to join in our Wednesday hustle here. In this yeah. 8 o'clock hour on Wednesday, it's always that hustle of the swap out at 8.30. We've got <laughs> one guest heading on out, one coming in. Excited to have Misty Slater here with us for our CLTCC segment here today. And I think you've got a couple guests that are going to be calling in with us today too, right? We do. We do. We have our industry partner, uh, Don Fowler with AFCO Industries here in Alexandria. And also we'll have Baxter Soche with our Manufacturing Extension Partnership of Louisiana. Perfect. Well, we're going to go and hope that's Don on the phone right now. Before we do that, um, you know, Dr. Jimmy Sautel sent me a text because he said to make sure that that caller that called earlier about the trade jobs out there said we hear you loud and clear. And, yes, I mean, this is what you guys are focused on and and everything that we're going to talk about here coming up focuses all around that, right? It, it absolutely does. Much of my work is spent with business and industry uh, learning what they need, the skill set, so that our short-term training, especially uh, for that quick response is uh, is adequate for what they need to fill that workforce gap. Well, I know one company that you work a lot with. Let's go to the phones and say good morning. Is this our guest on the phone? Uh, hey, good morning. Ah, good morning, Don. How are you? Yeah. Hey, doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, no worries, no worries. So, yeah, today our topic is manufacturing support. And in central Louisiana, we have mostly small and medium manufacturers. And there's a plethora of resources that many are just not aware of, uh, maybe don't utilize or, or maximize uh, to their advantage uh, for growth and sustainability. And so Don and his team at AFCO is one that we've had a long-standing relationship with. And so we thought we'd bring him on just to share a bit of the good news and support that not only CLCCC, but our Manufacturing Extension Partnership, uh, as we lovingly call MEP, have also provided for AFCO. Yeah, uh, Missy, thank you. You know, I, AFCO, like everybody knows, we had our 75th anniversary this past October. And we're doing a lot of things uh, these days to try and uh, constantly improve. And one of the things that we've done most recently was through an engagement with uh, uh, the MEP for a, a green belt uh, training, a lean manufacturing a green belt training that uh, – we sent, I think, uh, Misty, I think we sent about 12 people through some of our, you know, uh, developing leaders. We sent them through this green belt training, and uh, it's an opportunity really for them to learn how to do projects, recognize, uh, you know, w- things that that really need to be done and ways to improve uh, how we go about our processes. And so... Uh, it, it was a great opportunity, but again, that's one of, of several engagements that we've had with uh, MEP through the years. Yes, and a, another project that we're currently working on and uh, hoping to launch is an, uh, I say, onboarding apprenticeship that Don and his team have been working with us for about a year now. It's another project, uh, but it's a way to hire individuals and get them the on-the-job training while still getting that mentoring and coaching from our instructional team at CLTCC. And so we, we hope to gather up and work with the Workforce Commission. Elaine uh, Moros and her team also are working with us to, to secure some candidates for that. And so we're hoping to fill some of those vacancies that you have, Don. Right, Missy. And for us, you know, we are uh, we use a temp to hire modeling uh, model of, of employing folks. So we we hire through the local temp agencies or staffing agencies. Uh, those employees come to work for us for a nine day period, and if they 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 prove themselves as as uh, you know being able to work in the environment that we have here and do the job, then we roll them onto our payroll from there. Um, that is has been like the, the the biggest problem for us in terms of um, the rollover, the turnover velocity, and that and those ranks is very very high. So uh, I'm looking at uh, my staffing report from the end of the month, and I noticed that last year uh, we the the turnover in that group was almost 47 percent. Uh, we've made uh, we've made an improvement there. We're at 33 percent right now is the turnover rate among those uh, those employees, and it's tough. You know, I I, um, I visit with a lot of the manufacturers in the area and um, <clears throat> through our uh, manufacturing leadership council, and 
and you know this is this is common among uh, many of the manufacturers in the area here. So this is a this is a big problem to be solved. Um, we have jobs. It's difficult to find folks who who will come to work, and uh, so we need to we need to figure out better ways. What do we need to do better? And that's part of this initiative that we're working with uh, CLTCC. And that's what we love working, you know, or one of the reasons we love working with Don and his team at AFCO is because it does take a partnership, a true partnership, which is not just CLTCC, it's not just the resources and, and the dollars, but it's the manufacturers also saying, what can we do better? How can we improve our practice? And this onboarding apprenticeship is one of those opportunities where it is a sacrifice, a bit of a sacrifice for the, the manufacturer, but the investment long term hopefully will see a reduced turnover rate and longevity in terms of careers because Trish we've talked about on the show before about how this generation is not as well yeah. connected right. to those uh, technical skill sets yep. and so it's changing a culture uh, not just a, you know, a career option but it's changing an actual culture and I have to imagine it also builds that loyalty to that manufacturer also because they've been able to do this and they've seen that the manufacturer has allowed them and, and that is more of a partnership yeah. So it's got to build a little bit more when you talk about Don, about your your turnover there. Hopefully that builds a little bit more of that loyalty. It, no, that's right, and that's our hope certainly. And and when we talk about changing the culture of of employees, it's also changing a little bit of our own culture as well. We've got to we've got to figure out ways in uh, the ways that we manage. What are we going to do different to to connect with uh, these workers, understand our workers better? You know, all of those sorts of things, and certainly the onboarding process is just the beginning of that. And so through MEP and, and the Greenbelt Project, you know, Don's managers, his supervisors, his leadership team were able to get some of the, the best subject matter experts, uh, you know, nationwide, globally, uh, right here in central Louisiana. So that's just a great asset of being part of MEP. Yeah, so a great yeah, guest a great to, yeah, to talk about how this, before we talk to, you know, the next, after this commercial break we're going to go to, we're going to actually talk about the MEP specifically too so thank you for joining us here this morning that was great yeah thank you Yeah, well thank you thank you very much i appreciate you all have a great day you too we'll take our break and we'll come right back great 9.70 a.m. 104.9 fm ksyl 9.70 a.m. 104.9 fm ksyl now back to talk back And we're back this morning with Misty Slater in our CLTCC segment. And you've got another guest joining us here. We're going to go back to the phone. Good morning. You're on Talk Back with Misty Slater. Good morning. This is Baxter, associate with the MEP Louisiana. How are you doing? Hey, good morning, Baxter. Thank you so much for taking time out to join us this morning and talk a little bit about the Manufacturing <laughs> Extension Partnership of Louisiana. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, privileged to be here, and um, I, I can tell you that we have a long history of, of working with, with MISTI and CLTCC, and, and actually, um, if you like, MISTI, I'll, I'll give a little background of what the MEP is, is about and what we do. Yes, yeah, fabulous. Okay. Great. All right. So I, I've been with the MEP of Manufacturing Extension Partnership since 2001, I'm a certified master black belt, um, which, <clears throat> you know, as uh, Don Fowler mentioned earlier, part of the green belt training and that stuff, that's sort of what I do, lean and six sigma training. Uh, my background is engineering, and I'm currently the operations director for the Manufacturing Extension Partnership of Louisiana. And um, just to, to help the audience understand, we've, we're part of a nationwide organization of, of MEPs. There, there are 51 uh, throughout the U.S. Uh, centers <clears throat> through all 50 states and Puerto Rico. And we work in collaboration with the Louisiana Community Technical College System in all 12 colleges throughout the state. Um, <clears throat> and their local resource, obviously, is the LTCC. And, and as I mentioned, we, we've had a long history of working with Misty and, and the manufacturers in her area. So um, our, our focus is specifically um, <clears throat> specifically uh, with manufacturers. Um, so, um, I also want to share that, you know, we, we typically when we engage with a client and, and we might get a call from Misty's group and we, we engage with someone, we're going to check if they have a, you know, Duns and Bradstreet number, if they have a NAICS code that is a manufacturing code, which qualifies 
us to provide resources to them. And and then also, um, we're going to go in, you know, with someone, a representative from CLTCC that is also helping. While we're bringing the technical expertise to the table, um, we're also bringing a workforce person or representative from the local college in whichever area of the state we're working in um, to address all of the needs that that manufacturer might have. So in order to do that, we would um, usually um, do a business assessment to see, you know, where they might have some needs and how we might address them um, <clears throat> so that, you know, if, it, if it's training, you know, we, we would look at um, some of the things we look at are reducing costs improving existing processes, seeing where they may have some training needs, or as Don mentioned, Don Follow with AFCO mentioned, you know, some onboarding or some other types of training. And something that, that Misty and the group at CLTCC does very well is actually customizing training to meet the specific needs of that manufacturer. So so that's a really great relationship for us coming in with CLTCC where we can address the specific needs of each manufacturer. It's not just one size fits all. Yeah, and the great thing about the MEP partnership, but from my perspective, is as I said before, you know, Don Fowler and his team have access to state-of-the-art training, you know, that someone in a, a larger more urban uh, area would have. MEP has uh, 51 units across the United States and Puerto Rico. And so not only do we have access to, uh, I guess, the resources just within the Louisiana manufacturing community, we can tap into 49 other states and Puerto Rico's uh, agency if we, you know, so need to. Yes, yes. Um, and another thing that we, you know, we wanted to talk about today was you know, what are the what are the three main topics in the state of manufacturing today? What are the things that manufacturers are dealing with? And and as Missy mentioned, because we're part of a nationwide organization, there are resources available that we may, you know, call on another state, another MEP that might have a best practice that might help one of the manufacturers here in Louisiana. Um, if they've had some um, some challenges, we can help to address those more than just on a state level. Um, and, and three of the main things that we're addressing nationwide, and they're not, not unique just to Louisiana, we see it everywhere, are labor shortages and workforce. I think Misty and, and Don Fowler mentioned those uh, a few minutes ago. Also, supply chain challenges that, that companies are dealing with, and disruptions in supply chain, and um, also, you know, these wait times that we're having. We, we, See a, a perfect example of that is in the is in the automobile industry where you used to go to a car lot and you had 300 cars to choose from and now you know you have to put a deposit and you have to wait four months before you maybe get a car. <laughs> so it's totally turned all of this stuff upside down and it's impacting everyone, right? Um, yeah, we actually thing, uh, Baxter and I and not to interrupt there, Baxter, but one great example of MEP support. Uh, is with our partners at Tri-State Industries. You know, so goes Union Tank, so goes many of our suppliers here. And so when Tri-State was faced with that, you know, we were able to connect them through the MEP uh, with other contracts available for them to bid to keep their business sustainable and independent of uh, what they were doing with Union Tank. And so there, there are things of that nature that are seasonal uh, that can be, uh, you know, just a pick-me-up until things level out. Yes, indeed, and and so, um, and then another thing that you know Don Don didn't get a chance to mention, and as we worked with we worked with Don Fowler's group for many years, it's just a remarkable uh, example of, of manufacturing in the community of, of the Alexandria region, is that they have implemented robotics where where it makes sense, and so that that moves us into the third main topic for manufacturing today is. Where can we automate things? And, and, and some of the key things to look at as we work with manufacturers on is that a, a robot doesn't fit every, every need for every business. But in cases where you have repetitive work, um, you know, and, um, <clears throat> and we see people having repetitive stress injuries from, from doing the same work, tedious work over and over and over, there are things that we try to help uh, companies look at how can they man, uh, automate or, you know, <clears throat> use robots in those areas of their business, and then also in cases where you really have a hard time with turnover and are there, there are jobs that are dangerous or tasks that are dangerous, um, when we can use advanced manufacturing techniques 
to remove the danger for the for the employees, it's just a great advantage. And then we and like we said, the Misty mentioned, we tap into nationwide resources to find best practices for that. We're going to take a, our last commercial break right here. If you stay with us, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about all of this partnership again as soon as we come back. 970 AM, 104.9 FM, KSYL. Now back to Talk Back. 970 AM, 104.9 FM, KSYL. It has been a great Wednesday. We're going to go back to our guest on the phone here and pick him back up, as long as I push all these buttons right. You still with us there? Uh, yes, yes. I fabulous, am. fabulous. Thank you for staying with us. And I know you've got a couple more topics you want to hit on with this whole program. Yes. So, you know, MEP, as I, let me start with CLTCC. We are one of 12 community colleges in the Louisiana Community and Technical College System. And so our partnership with MEP makes it readily accessible to manufacturers across the state. You know, just go to your local community college. Of course, I'm the representative here uh, in central Louisiana. And or you can go directly to the uh, MEPOL website, MEPOL.org, to register and and sign up, uh, you know, if you have a specific need, if you're a manufacturer. But um, we have really grown so much in the last probably 6 to 12 months and uh, are really starting to hit our stride with capabilities and resources, which is so impactful because as we always go back to, and and I'm sure Larkin and Jim will probably echo this as uh, well as our our system uh, folks as well, that manufacturing really has the multiplier effect. And so when we have strong manufacturing in central Louisiana, we have a strong central Louisiana and and jobs. So we are very thankful for Baxter, uh, for Dana Blanchard, who is our MEP director, our state director, Uh, For all of the support that they give us, Uh, we enjoy several partnerships uh, with LaSalle Lumber, Hunt Plywoods, uh, Sunlaw Powder Coating uh, is relatively new, and I'm actually getting to go on a great, uh, what I call a treat visit today uh, for Holiday Fried Pecans. So, uh, you know, it's it's pretty exciting work. I know, Baxter, sorry you had to call in and you couldn't (laughs) be here today uh, for that. But uh, uh-huh. but yeah, I mean well, it's, it's great to be I'll, able to I'll, provide that support for our manufacturers and watch them thrive. Definitely, I would like to add too that we we have over three thousand two hundred manufacturers in the state, and if, if a manufacturer you know has some some interest or some challenges, they they can go to um, Misty and the group at CLTCC have an incredible. Uh, training facilities for, for manufacturing clients in their area, and uh, their instructors come directly from industry. Most of them have a whole career of industry behind them. So the technical training that CLTCC provides and the other colleges provide for manufacturers is very hands-on. It's really good stuff. And, um, and then, <clears throat> you know, I'd also like to add that one of the things that that all of the colleges and CLTCC are working on with MEP is changing the image of manufacturing careers. These are high-paying jobs, technical skills, people that have a great quality of life, and um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's what we can do together to change that image and provide employment and great opportunities. The, you know, the enthusiasm that our instructors have, and I cannot let the segment end. In fact, I could probably have a whole show with uh, my, my team, Don Robinson, Ronnie Richmond, uh, Larry Book, uh, Willie Jackson, Mike Suklik, you know, at Nub Parker. You guys probably know these names very well. They, among them, probably have hundreds of years of experience in manufacturing, which makes all the difference when they're doing the instruction and they're coaching, they're mentoring the next generation of manufacturing workforce. And this ties right back into that caller earlier that said, yes, this is great, great careers out there to be had, and you guys are providing all of this. And then again, for for companies out there that might need to want to look into this MEP, I think you actually you kind of answered my question before I asked it there. Where do they go? if they're interested in looking into this. So they can come right to you, Misty, right? Yes, absolutely. Reach out to me at the college, and we will certainly connect you with the resources. Again, we're we're just a piece of the the puzzle. We can bring in teams of the subject matter experts to help you with your specific needs. That's terrific. Well, thank you, Baxter, for being with us today on the phone. We appreciate that. And um, 
Anything you want to wrap up with in the last 20 seconds here, Misty? Well, we do have our heavy equipment operator class starting July 25th, and so we're very excited. We have a couple of takers already. Uh, I think we have five or six registered. We're very excited about this, uh, our short-term class in Alexandria. And we also had our first Foster Promise qualifier. I was so excited to hear that. Uh, I think uh, she's headed toward our farm tech program. Oh, wonderful. So, yes. And, of course, we've got our online health care programs in general, which we'll be talking about in the next couple of weeks. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Great segment today. Great show today, Nathan. Thank you. Thank Thank you you for hanging with me the last two days. I'll be looking forward to hearing you tomorrow with Matt. Yes, tomorrow Matt Ritchie will be up here with me. I'll have him just as an open line time, 4428255, for the first part of the show, and then his economic update from 8 to 9 tomorrow. So. Join us tomorrow. Again, thank you guys, and have a great Wednesday. I'm going to give a quick shout-out to my Nate Skate. He is 20 years old today, and my sister as well. Happy birthday, Lee. Awesome. You guys have an awesome day. Yes, you too. You've been listening to Talk Back. The opinions expressed were those of the hosts and callers, and not necessarily those of Senlaw Broadcasting.